So anyway, so he's, he introduces himself. He says, "I'm Cristo." <laughs> who you have only ever heard about as a radical militant who was totally into expelling all the Californians. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, he's, he's saying, "I've you know this is that's not where I'm standing right now, and mm -hmm. I'm here and and do this and you." He says, "And the army doesn't have this, and you and I have it." And um, yeah, I kind of shake my head and say, "The Cristobal, huh?" Nice to finally meet you. He turns to Father Ayala and kind of catches himself and, and says, in very, very flawless schoolboy, you know, Latin, you know, benediction, you know, upon you, Father, and great, great you know, gratitude for your house. So, yeah, he was, <laughs> you instantly see sort of, you know, Cristobal's <laughs> early upbringing sort of just kind of <laughs> overcome him for a second there. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, protection of this place is my, that's my priority. That's, that's why I've done everything I've done. Um, I'm glad to see that you want to protect it as well. Make no mistake. We want some land reform here. But that's not a problem for you and me right now. Right now, Rancho Tijuana is the problem. We can't talk to them. They would shoot us down. But you can. The, it, it, the, with them, this countryside is ours. This countryside cannot be attacked from the east. More of my people will listen to me from this position of strength. And Rancho Tijuana doesn't give a shit about the Mexican government or those estados or anybody. This is what they listen to. And he points to the, the money on the desk. Mm -hmm. um, but he says, here I am talking like I'm in charge. And, and so basically, you, you have a new friend to make plans with. <laughs> Fun. Yeah. Um, so the, uh, the biggest, so, so anyway, he and you can, can talk a little bit more. He says, but... Uh, Okay, I'm trying to think a little bit more about this. Okay, in the course of time, what you will find, I'm really interested on how you want to deal with this, but just information in the course of time, is that some of the frustrated group that had been riding with Cristobal and his people who thought they were going to, for example, you know, take over the mission, mm -hmm. some of them are frustrated and are going riding off on their own. Also, the army is completely fractured. All the organization of the army is degenerating into a bunch of independent bands of squatters, bandits, and uh, you know looters and stuff like that. Or some of them are trying to hold the army together, um, but it's really, it's, it's a mess across the whole region because their funding was gone. And their their rea their inter their official interaction with the government of San Diego is destroyed. So all of a sudden, there's you know clashes everywhere. So uh, so the one what Cristobal will tell you is what he is what he can what he thinks is the biggest problem is that he was pursued from the east and sooner or later sooner or later the, the you know it's, nobody keeps secrets even when they want to even the most loyal and friendly people they will say the wrong thing the rancher who helped me 
he's yeah he's he's going to be in a lot of trouble the army will come after him he's uh so, so yeah, Cristobal doesn't really know all the details of the region, but I'll, we'll yeah. talk more about this in a little while, I think. Sure. Also, but, uh, but anyway, yes. So, the so the Malero Ranch is going to have a big three pronged problem. Um, a combined raid by the ranches that have allied with the Obispos. Um, a uh, a, gr a rogue group of the army who've decided to come after the money themselves and have knew enough about which way it went that they've, you know, sort of sem I mean, it's taken them a long time, but they've kind of tracked their way this direction. Um, and then finally, um, the uh, frustrated militant Diagüenos who ride south and are not stupid enough to try to raid Tijuana but just a little further south, that would be you. Yeah, so, right in the spot. Right. <clears throat> so you you are quite soon going to be at the juncture of these forces. And I'm the reason I'm telling you this is because I don't think that you're stupid. I think you've probably got all, like you said, you not just arms the place, you have got all of your informational, you know, uh, abilities at work. Um, and, yeah. uh, and you're not even sure if all of the Diguenos that you work with are trustworthy in this regard. Oh, well, no, of course. There's no way. <clears throat> yeah. That oh. they could all be. So, uh, so therefore, what are you going to do as you realize the, the storm is coming? I think we will try to divert the Mexican army. We, when we hear about abandoned of, from the Mexican army coming closer. And I think some uh, did we sp spread out the rumors about not, it's not the Malero ranch uh, where okay. this happens. Mm -hmm. It's uh, well, yeah, point them towards the Obispo. You did actually frame uh, the Obispos before. That's true. Right. So, <laughs> so we, we're trying to sort of misinform them. Um, you certainly set up for it pretty well in what you did before right and that was actually yeah, a successful yeah, yeah. role as i recall to to throw them to, yeah. to create a false trail so actually that doesn't actually require a role so oh, yeah yeah and now that i think um, about that. Mm -hmm. and uh so and that's also you know in a way just so we can focus on the obispo raid and try to to manage that part of the problem um and i guess we pulled together most of the people we have right. to meet up meet those uh the obispos and the other ranchers that i like better um to try to to, to block them to to get onto our, our land okay um and so the uh their their plan is actually a quite destructive their plan yeah. is very destructive specifically toward you and your family <laughs> So it's very much less of a invade and take over territory so much as a direct strike, right? Okay, okay. Yep. So, so we are talking probably about uh, 15 to 20 people. Uh, we we're talking about it being very well timed during the night. We are talking also about uh, probably uh, an attempt at chaos, an attempt at stampeding animals, an attempt at burning something valuable, an attempt at, uh, you know, shooting somebody, uh, uh, yeah, probably like riding through some of the, the, um, the, the quarters, the, 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 the villagey type little dwellings on the ranch right, where yeah. you know, people live, um, riding through those and wrecking havoc, shooting people, um, and basically trying to get the bunch of, get you running around trying to handle all these problems all at once. Yeah. So that's your, your, what your situation is. But as I say, you have been kind of prepared and ready for this. So 
Therefore, um, you have, instead of one die, you know, um, you have two, and it would be three, except that they know your area just as well as you do. Yeah. yeah. So that's that's really the problem. And this is actually pretty tragic in some ways. Some, I mean, one of the people involved is just exactly that same person you had lunch with down by the ocean. <laughs> of course. Right. Um, so, yeah. Um, so yeah, that's that's kind of what's what's happening here. Gutierrez is in the lead, believe me. Of course, of course, he is. Um, so I'm what I'm seeing is that this is going for a roll, but we don't know a lot about what leads up to success or failure. So therefore, whatever the narration is should actually go backwards a little bit, so we learn more about how it comes to a climax. Does that make exactly. sense? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, of course. Um, and I think I two dice. You said. And then we have. Um, I refuse to down bow down for the before Obispo. Right that's there, you pretty, go. Yep, that's it. I suppose. Good one. Uh-huh. And then I have five in my pool, and I take two from those. Okay. So six dice total. Uh, and not a single one. Oh. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> the, failure, the failures start now. Yeah, mm-hmm. they have. Okay. Um, so this is actually quite uh, quite disastrous. Um, yeah. I mean, you have... Uh, uh, yeah, you, you, this is the, the, the way I can see this is that you will be... Okay, first of all, the, the fires and things begin, the, the, the disruptions occur, and as I see it, you've been fairly well prepared for this. Um, and yeah. that um, the, let's see here. Okay, so therefore it's not going to be easy for them to accomplish you know everything that they're they're doing. Um, how would this probably play out? I think the problem is that your father is too old to you know to be easily managed when it becomes necessary. You know to no. to move him or protect him or things like that and. It, He's not, you know, demented or causing trouble or anything like that, but he is difficult to, to, to it takes a lot of care, right? And so, yeah. um, so therefore, it's when you are actually attempting to get him to a safer position that it takes too much time. Um, it, it, it comes to the point where you need to get your family into um, a particular, a more safe spot, right? The, the the little estate area where you live is not actually fortified. You need to get to a, a more uh, a place that's more more defensible. Um, yeah. Which uh, and and prob- and so I'm going to say that from what you told me, the people with you, everyone is armed. Everybody is is you know behaving in good order, but it just takes too long. So, sounds, sounds yeah, so the the what that means, considering your other traits and things like that, it seems to me as you, though you would probably give up the building, and certain other things in favor of keeping the family safe. Yeah, Basically, yeah, of course. That's what I'm thinking. That's... So, uh, so therefore, yes, you you manage to do that, but it takes too long. You cannot get back to lead the defense of the house. Um, and uh, uh, you know, people that you know are shot down as they are trying to defend the house, and uh, and you get to watch your home burn. So that's the 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 consideration. Um, and as that so as that is happening, and the the, the, the Gutierrez is you know looking around, and you say, where did he go? You know, where did he, where, where, where is this, you know, get me Molero, right? I want that bitch of his, and I want him dead. 
So uh, this is this is when he starts rallying people. And then some people are saying, OK, we've done enough. We've done enough. This is what we came for. You know, we, we, we did this. We're not here, you know, so you can, you know, so you, the, we're not we're not here for that. Right. We're not here yeah. for, yeah. you know, and, and so, uh, so he's trying to, uh, he's trying to intimidate people into supporting him for this to basically hunt you down on this, wherever you may be in this widespread area. Um, or if you're in a safe area, which I think is probably one of the, um, one of the barn and farm buildings, I think, yeah. um, to take you there would be very dangerous. And so he's trying to get people to support him in this. Um, and so however successful he is, we'll leave up to narration in terms of how many people he can bring. Because if they don't agree, he will only be coming in with four or five people at most. Um, yeah. But it may, maybe even just two or three, actually. But uh, but if he's more successful, then he will be able to you know keep at least half of the people he came with uh, to help him. Um, yeah. And so this is where um, this is where Gutierrez is going to put the the, the bring the hammer down. He is going to okay. He has he has successfully done this raid. He is coming for you. And Am I close, uh, close enough this, that I hear he's shouting oh, yeah. out about oh, sure. enemy? Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. No less than what oh. you expected, really, anyway. Or at least no, or no. perhaps even somebody running will come and tell you, you know, he's coming. Yeah, yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah, I think we, we're... We're getting re ready in the farm building that mm -hmm. we're in. We're also a few of us move move out to buildings nearby, right? And sort of set up set up an um, mm -hmm. uh, an ambush mm -hmm. here for him. And I talk with Javier, one of the old yeah. farmers, uh, yes. so to gave the money and tell him get caught and tell him where we are. Uh -huh. Oh, I see. Okay. Tell him. Tell him. Mm -hmm. where, mm -hmm. um, okay. We will, we will take him down. Excellent. Um, and so in that case, uh, this is three dice for you. And it is potentially lethal. Yeah, I can, I can mm -hmm. see that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, that's uh, three dice and five with the refuse to bow down for the disposal again. I have three left in the pool, so I think I would need to go all in for this one. Um, I'm sorry to see you're not using the trait with bullets, but. Yeah, it could be not one single one. If I have played Burning Wheel, this said would have been an amazing role. Oh, but... no. Oh, <laughs> oh no. man. Okay. All sixes and, uh, and okay. fives. Well, what that means is that he was able to bully all, as much, you know, maximal support that he could get from the yeah. other people. Um, and so, therefore, you know, they come in with uh, your, your ambush probably works, but probably doesn't stop the main effort. In other words, you probably kill some people, but not, uh, yeah. not enough to stop the main effort. And yeah. uh, and the last, yeah, the last we'll see of you for tonight is uh, is the bullets that uh, that that are fired into you, um, and you have no idea what's going to happen to your wife or anything like that. You're out there riding around, trying to fight, yeah. Yeah. and uh, and so that that's what happens to you. We will have to get a little save from you to see if you live or die. Yeah. So, what does um, and I'm treating this as an ordinary roll, and in order to be super non-favorite, I will say two dice because that's in the middle of the range. Um, yeah. And uh, and and so you can choose a trait. Mm -mm -mm. And I guess that's the same one once again. Uh, 
that I refuse to down, bow down for. No, you are sports. just a fanatic, aren't you? Okay. Yeah, at this moment, mm -hmm. I don't, I don't see a, a, any other way in this one, and I don't have any pool boys, so that's for for this okay. total. Let's see. No, oh. that's that. Oh no. <laughs> Okay, so we have a tragic end at the Molero Ranch, um, and that will we'll have to decide what to do about that. Um, there's a couple of possibilities. Um, picking up another character is pretty easy, actually. Yeah. Um, but uh, but we'll deal with that for next time. Yeah. Okay. Um, so have we had enough disaster and torment for tonight? Um, <laughs> Yes, so. <laughs> three failed rolls in a row yeah i know yeah. brutal ones too the question i have for hans is uh just out of curiosity um are you going to make any special effort to keep mondragon from getting a bullet um i think no i think i think it's a little no i think uh jose I'm, I'm just kind of totally overwhelmed at you know, being thrust into leadership, and now there's like a whole political situation swirling right. around me. Yeah. I think it's more like uh, it just uh, goes out of my mind, and I kind of forget about it. Yeah, it's a well, low priority. <laughs> Mondragon disappears. Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah, um, surprising. So, strangely enough, yeah. The next time you look for him, who? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. All right. Oh, yeah. oh man. Okay. Well, we will not forget Malero. His this no. event will be a big pivot for a bunch of other things. So that's mm. um, that's where we're going for now. Ooh, Cristobal's going to be pissed. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I just real okay, I got it. <laughs> I'm all set for next time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, well, gentlemen, thank you very much. Thank you. We have... Yeah, thank you. And I'll Thanks. look forward to uh, to posting this. This is a notable session. So yeah, all right, guys. Very much so. Talk to you Thank later. You. Yeah. All right. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye. Thanks.